Americans for Fair Taxation presents the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation, and recorded by Bob Paxton, a volunteer with the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association. And now, this week's Chairman's Report. Hello, I'm Bob Paxton with the AFFT Chairman's Report for Friday, April 16th, 2021. Just follow the money. Some of the comments most often heard from fair tax supporters are, everyone I talk to about the fair tax ends up thinking it's a great idea. No one likes the income tax, and everyone would love to get their whole paycheck. When people understand the prebate tax credit, they see that that's better for lower and middle income people than the income payroll tax is. My friends agree that the fair tax will adequately fund Social Security and keep it solvent. Now that's something the current system just won't do. My friends also see how the fair tax will show everyone the real costs of the federal government and why that's important. When I write a letter to my member of Congress about the fair tax, all I get back are generic form responses that don't really address the points I made. Now, even though my member of Congress is a fair tax co-sponsor, he or she just doesn't really say a whole lot about the fair tax, and of course, the media ignores the fair tax. The reason for the obvious lack of enthusiasm shown by Congress, the D.C. think tanks, and the media is that the people to whom they answer, i.e. the ruling class, sees the fair tax for what it is, a huge transfer of power and money from D.C. to the citizens. In their view, this must not be allowed, and they make it clear to their subordinates that the fair tax must be stopped. Now, here are some of the reasons why the ruling class can exercise so much control over our elected members of Congress. At the top of the list, the costs of election. According to OpenSecrets.org, in the 2020 federal election cycle, the candidates for the 435 House seats and the 33 Senate seats that were up for re-election spent a total of $8,703,050,547. Yes, that's almost $9 billion spent in one election cycle alone. Now, if you divide that $8,703,050,547 by the total of 468 seats that were up for grabs, this comes out to $18,596,262 per seat. Now, of course, that's just an average. In actuality, some races were more expensive than that and others less so, but even the less expensive races still cost a lot of money. Most of the candidates who get elected are going to earn a salary of $174,000 a year. A few in leadership will make $193,000, and Nancy Pelosi will pull down $223,500. Do the math. On average, the candidates spent 107 times more money running for office than they will make serving in office. This is why members of Congress will admit, well, privately anyway, that they spend a good deal of time every day trying to raise the money they need to finance their re-election campaigns. So, where do they get most of that money? Well, obviously it has to come from people in groups who have large amounts of money to donate. But, people don't just give that kind of money to candidates without expecting something in return. So, when big money tax lobbyists who make millions of dollars buying tax favors for their clients tell members of Congress not to openly push for the fair tax, the members obey. OpenSecrets.org reports that President Trump raised 48.85% of his total take of $773,954,555 from small donors, those donating $200 or less. Candidate Biden raised 38.94% of his total of $1,044,187,828 from small donors. The remainder, of course, came from large donors. That comes out to 51.15% for Trump, 61.06% for Biden. Now, the percentage of small donor to large donor contributions varies for each individual congressional race, but most of the donations that political candidates receive come from larger donors. Lobbyists. One of the biggest sources of campaign money for candidates is lobbyists. Again, referring to OpenSecrets.org, they report that federal lobbyists received $3.5 billion in 2020. Now, lobbyists serve two main functions. One is to collect money that can then be passed on to members of Congress through fundraisers and other donations. And secondly, 
It's to provide a place of employment for retired members of Congress who can guarantee the lobbying firm's access to sitting members of Congress. Now, members of Congress who cooperate with the desires of lobbyists will generally receive large campaign donations while they're in Congress and a future job if they want it when they leave Congress. In addition, many lobbyists offer jobs at huge salaries to family members of sitting representatives and senators. According to OpenSecrets.org, there are 447 former members of Congress who are actively lobbying the current Congress. Now, lobbyists have been quite happy to see all the changes being proposed by the Biden administration. For the most part, those changes are aimed at people and groups who can afford to pay lobbyists enormous fees, and they're willing to pay those fees in an effort to minimize the adverse effects these policy changes will have on them. So, as usual, the people who can afford to buy favors get off easy, while the rest of us pay for their breaks. Then there's political action committees and other groups. The Senate Leadership Fund, a fund that donates to Republicans, received $434,500,000 from individual donors giving $200 or more, and most of that was donated to candidates in 2020. The Senate Majority PAC that donates to Democrats received and spent $372 million in 2020. Now, the ruling class and their minions in congressional leadership will reward members of Congress who do what they're told. They'll make sure that those members receive large donations from groups that the ruling class controls or can influence. On the other hand, members who don't go along not only get little to nothing in the way of donations, they often find that big money is suddenly backing their opponents. The ruling class and their minions in Congress love the fact that huge amounts of money will be spent in 2021 and 2022 by groups lobbying to shield themselves from Biden's proposed income tax changes. Now, no doubt, there are some people in Congress who do see the advantages of the fair tax over the income tax. However, party leaders on both sides of the aisle want to keep the gravy train firmly planted on the tracks. They want to keep a corrupt, complicated, incomprehensible, unfair income payroll tax system in place because they make a lot of money for their campaign coffers by tinkering with it at the behest of lobbyists. In that environment, members who have good things to say about the fair tax learn rather quickly that being too vocal in their support for getting rid of the income tax can have some painful consequences. In conclusion, does all of the above mean that there is no chance to see the fair tax enacted? Well, absolutely not. Sun Tzu was a military strategist and advisor to a Chinese king around 500 BC. He wrote The Art of War. The following quote from his book applies here. If you know the enemy and you know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. And if you know neither your enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle, end of quote. By knowing the enemy, we can expose and defeat them. They can only operate if the people they're stealing from can be persuaded to think that others are to blame. They desperately don't want us pulling back the curtain and seeing who they really are, people who produce nothing but are parasites on the rest of us. As humorist P.J. O'Rourke said, Anyway, no drug, not even alcohol, causes the fundamental ills of society. If we're looking for the source of our troubles, we shouldn't test people for drugs. We should test them for stupidity, ignorance, greed, and love of power. It's time that Americans take control of our country by eliminating the income payroll tax system. No more games that profit only the ruling class and their minions, the politicians. Enact the fair tax now. Now, if you have friends who don't know about the fair tax, send them to fairtax.org. Have them watch the whiteboards under how it works, and if they agree, ask them to please join us. Then, contact your members of Congress and the President and demand that Congress pass the fair tax. The only truly fair tax. This has been the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation. Check back every week for news and information about the fair tax and learn why the fair tax should replace our antiquated federal income tax system. If you'd like to receive a copy of the Chairman's Report in your inbox every week, sign up at fairtax.org. 